Hello, I'm Joan and I'm here to talk to you about sensitive skin, give you some tips about it and what to do if you've got it. So if someone says to me they've got sensitive skin, what it really means to me is that their skin is overreactive in some way and it could be overreactive to a certain product, certain ingredient or it could be when they go outside and there's UV rays or harsh wind or rain, um, it could be reactive to environmental factors like that. So that's what it means. It means it's real overreactive to something. So how do I know that they've just got sensitive skin? How does it manifest itself? Usually sensitive skin will be accompanied by stinging, burning, itchiness, dry, inf inflammation, right? And that's all signs of sensitive skin. Now the issue happens when it's not just sensitive skin, but they've got an underlying skin condition. So we have to look at those as well and think, is it that? So for example, eczema. Um, when you've got eczema, it can be dry. You can get it around here, around this area, pretty much in a lot of our areas on the body, eczema. And eczema um, runs in the family with hay fever. Um, I have, I've got eczema sometimes, my children have had it. And it, it really is red and itchy. That's what it looks like, red inflamed, itchy skin, eczema. Okay, then you've got psoriasis. Psoriasis is like dry scaly patches of silvery scale skin and you can get that in a number of areas on the body or you may have rosacea. You could have the bright, you know, mask going over here, the central of the face. The cheeks are highly, highly red. But what you can tell with rosacea sufferers is that the, the broken capillaries are extremely visible. Yes, and you can see them and that's a sign of rosacea. So how to tell if you've just got sensitive skin? If you are getting persistent symptoms of the ones that I've talked like, um, the persistent stinging, burning, inflammation, if you've got it persistently, constantly, then you've more than likely got a, an underlying skin condition. However, if you've got a sensitized skin, you just need to be aware of that and how to test for it in future. A good little thing to do if you've got sensitive skin or for anyone for that matter, if you're trying a new product, try it on the inside of your arm, okay? Up here, try it here. Don't put it onto your face, no, that's not a good idea. Put it to the inside of the forearm and leave it and see what happens. And if you're going to be in any way allergic to that or sensitized or irritated with that product, it will show up, it will definitely. And when it doesn't, after 24 hours, pretty safe to use on your face. So there's lots of people out there that have got underlying skin issues and they sometimes get sometimes get them with their work. For example, hairstylists is a classic for contact dermatitis. Hairdressers forget to put on gloves and they're colouring someone's hair. Some of the chemicals from the colouring gets into their hand and through constant happening with chemicals going into their hand, their hands become very, very, very raw, very red inflamed and it's, it's contact dermatitis, quite sore. Really, that's why gloves are so important for all you hairstylists out there. Or like me, I've got a nickel allergy, which used to be really common for people with pierced ears, um, it used to be that a lot of earrings were made with nickels, nickel hoops, or going through the ear, the piercing that was made of nickel. And goodness, your ear would go so itchy, you'd want to scratch it all the time. It would turn black as well. I don't mean your ear, just a skin at the top level. But that is absolutely was nickel causing that. And nowadays, you'll see there's lots of earrings that are saying nickel free. Thank goodness. So what I need you to know is that sensitive skin is really caused because the outside layer of your skin, this protective barrier has been compromised in some way. So this protective barrier, I need you to think about the outside layer of your skin like bricks in the wall. Okay. And the bricks are held together with mortar. So this mortar is your intercellular moisturizers that you produce yourself and if there's some mortar missing from some of these outside cells there is like a 
tiny tear in your outside surface and the lipid barrier is broken in those areas. So it's like bits of mortar missing from that protective barrier and when that happens, oh, anything you put on your skin can go right in much, much deeper to the underlying skin tissues and aggravate it, irritate it. So that's what to be thinking about. Also, outside environmental factors, if you've got this issue going on, anything, any pollutants can go in and harmful bacteria can really set about infection, different things happening in the skin. So you need to think about keeping this protective barrier strong, strong, okay? So skin sensitivity increases with age because the protective barrier isn't replacing itself the same way. And as we get older, the skin is becoming drier. So what should we make sure that we do for sensitive skin? Really what you've got to do is ensure that you do not overwash your skin, overwash your face or your body if you've got sensitive skin, especially with hot water. So you need to be thinking about not using soap products or shower gels or bubble baths that are going to dry the skin out. So look for SLS free, sodium laurel sulfate free. Look for that type of thing when you have got this sensitivity going, okay? pH balance, that's what you need to be looking for when you've got sensitive skin. No hot showers or hot baths because they are going to dry your skin out more. Mm -hmm. So can't do that. No scrubs, do not use any skin scrubs. No microbeads, no walnut shell powder on your skin as an exfoliator. So that's no um, natural exfoliators or mechanical exfoliators. Do not go for the facial electric brushes to cleanse your skin because they are going to just sensitize you even more, right? So what products can you use? You need to be looking for cleansers that have got high antioxidants um, with rosehip seed oil, um, but do not look for products that contain botanical oils such as lavender, that will irritate. What you're looking for is healing type cleansers and cleansers that are going to moisturise the skin. So looking for cleansers with um, alpha linoleic acid, fatty acids like them, they are going to help repair this outside barrier. Also looking for moisturisers that contain humectants. Now humectant is an ingredient that's going to draw moisture into the skin and keep it hydrated. So things like hyaluronic acid or glycerine moisturisers like that to absolutely think about keeping this protective barrier intact. So the other story about this is thinking about this if we put butter on our hand and we went to um, cold water and we washed our hands with lukewarm cool water you would see the butter after it, it won't disappear but if we put the butter back on our hand and then we went and we washed our hand with very hot water when you come back look there'd be no butter left and that's how you need to think about it if you're washing your whole body under very hot showers or very hot baths you're stripping your own natural oil I hope I'm getting through to you. So I've given you the products to try and think about, to look for, what not to do. And really it's all about keeping your skin calm as possible. Light pressure as well. Absolutely using light pressure on your skin. So good luck. If you've got any questions at all about your skin, you want to talk further to me, please put them in the comments below. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And feel free at any time to email me with any skin questions. So my email address is joan at jlformulations.com and I'll see you soon. Bye.